unit 2.3 practice problems. Which of the following correctly indicates whether the solid represented in the uh, particulate model shown opposite conducts electricity and explains why or why not. So when we look at this model, we can see that we have cations and anions and that they are very tightly packed together but there's not any space for movement within this substance. And conducting electricity requires that there be space for movement along with difference of charges. It conducting electricity because it's made of positive and negative ions isn't good enough because they are different sizes, doesn't do anything for me. It does not conduct electricity because the ions cannot move freely within the solid. This sounds good. It doesn't conduct electricity because there are small spaces between the particles. No, we need the charges to be able to move around. So C is going to be my final answer. The particle level diagram opposite shows the structure for solid potassium fluoride. Although the molar mass for potassium chloride is greater than that of potassium fluoride, the density of potassium chloride is less than that of potassium fluoride. Which of the following representations of the structure of potassium chloride would represent and explain this phenomenon? So my difference thing is going to be that I'm changing fluorine for chlorine. Chlorine is one further down on the group for halogens, which means that it is going to be a larger molecule. Same number of negatives, but it is going to be larger than that of fluorine. So I'm going to look for something that keeps my positives the same size, but I have a larger size ion for chlorine. Not the charge, but the actual physical size. See, I have the opposite where my positive is larger. Uh, B, I have no change between my size structure. A, I do have a size change. D, this is an unnatural uh, structure since the cations are touching, anions are touching. This isn't going to happen in nature. Also, I don't have any size differential, so that's not going to make any sense either. So A is going to be my choice because I'm going to have larger atoms, which means they take up more space. So I can't pack as many atoms into as small of a space. The energy required to dissociate the ionic solids into gaseous state, also known as the lattice energy, for the compounds sodium fluoride and magnesium fluoride are shown in the table above. So you can see that the magnesium fluoride is substantially higher in lattice energy, which means it takes a lot more energy to uh, turn this solid into a gas. On the basis of Coulomb's law, which of the following best explains the large differential between the lattice energies of sodium fluoride and magnesium fluoride? Sodium and magnesium are going to be on the same period. And magnesium fluoride, uh, magnesium is going to have a higher intermolecular force, uh, sorry, a higher nuclear, effective nuclear charge. And it also has a higher charge differential between um, it and fluorine. So I am looking for something about magnesium having a higher effective nuclear charge or that um, magnesium has a higher charge than uh, sodium. The electronegativity of magnesium is greater than that of sodium. Um, Magnesium is really not interested in holding on to other electrons, so it definitely doesn't want to do that. Solubility doesn't have anything to do with my lattice energy. The mass of the magnesium cation isn't going to change anything. The thing that I'm interested in is going to be the charge, and especially since we have that statement of based on Coulomb's law, we are dealing with charge differentials. 
So the charge of magnesium cation is larger than that of sodium is going to be the answer that I'm going to choose. Of the following diagrams, which best represents a solid of potassium fluoride? So I'm looking for a natural uh, distribution between cations and anions. And then again, this is a solid, so I should have a uh, set routine shape. This is unnatural. I have cations touching cations, anions touching anions. Same thing here. I have cations touching cations, anions touching anions. B, I have a natural distribution. Everything looks packed tightly in together and no cations are touching cations, no anions are touching anions. So this is looking good. D, they are loose. They are not connected at all. This would not be a representation of a solid. So B is going to be my choice. Which of the following diagrams best illustrates how a displacement in an ionic crystal results in cleavage and brittleness? So this means that they are going to break apart and um, I'm going to have a separation between my things in a nice, uh, like solid uh, set differential there. So we have a couple of things here, a couple of representations. First off, I have um, really just two representations of ionic compounds in the first place. These bottom two, this is going to be that of a metallic bond. Okay, I have cations and then I have a quote unquote sea of electrons where the electrons are displaced and they just kind of free flow throughout the system. This is uh, only seen in metallic bonds, not ionic bonds. And we're specifically talking about an ionic crystal. In this bottom one, we have no charges stated and we also don't see any charges, uh, no repulsions between things. This is going to be a molecular example so that's not going to be my choice either then looking between these two my differentials i have a clean break in between where i have shifted no clean break here also it looks to seem as if uh, one of my charges has joined another positive charge and left a hole that is not going to be an option here so my only option left is going to be a even though I have that unnatural uh, charge uh, layout here. This is post-displacement. This is after I have forced something to change. This isn't how they would normally be, but this is how they are after I have forced a break.